Hello everybody and welcome back to the Jake's RC Stuff channel and today is a flight log for the 5th of May 2022, the third time I've been flying this year. Uh, and um, so this, if you don't know, is basically where I go through and talk about a day's flying or go through all the flying stuff that I did. Um, usually it's all just blank screen, this is something that you can sort of have on in another tab or, or, or um, whatever and, and listen to it while you go on and do other things. Um, but towards the end, there will be some sort of flight footage, so you'll uh, see that and enjoy that. So, um, first thing that I flew was, of course, the Flex RV-8. Had a bit of a Flex day today, uh, but the Flex RV-8, and it had a weird flap issue. It was fine on the ground, um, it worked okay on the ground, but at full throttle, the left flap had sort of flipped down and back up really quickly. Landed it, had a look. And it turns out that um, if you've ever seen like a Futaba plug, where the bits of plastic keeps the metal pins in, one of them had gone on the signal wire. Um, so at full throttle, or I guess when the plane was moving around, it was sort of connecting and disconnecting from the um, signal wire. That was easily fixed. I had a spare extension lead in one of the boxes. I took the Futaba plug off that because it was just the plastic bit I needed. Put it on the flap servo. It's good to go. All fixed. And nearly knocked me thrown off the table like a pillock. Um, I also, um, had a great picture of me flying it, I'm not sure if I included it in here or not, um, but, uh, it was, that was a nice surprise. The Flex Jet, um, was next, um, good flight, it was using the Turnergy batteries, not the Overlanders, and I managed to do a Rolling Harrier with it, which was interesting and, and slightly scary, um. But because of the way that that plane flies, and because of the gyros and stuff, and it being past the stall point and everything for a jet, basically, once I got it in a Harrier, I did I did full right aileron, and it just sat there doing it until I let go of it, and it stopped, bang on, and, and went. What's really good with the flex jet as well is, is how incredible it is in a flat spin. You do a flat spin, you let go of the rudder, and it just stops dead because of the gyros and, and, and Harriers, and the, more or less directly in the um, direction that you asked it to come out of um also i started doing sort of knife edge spins so you go up you sh cut the power so it slows down and then instead of just putting rudder in and letting it go over like you do with a normal knife edge you put rudder over and go full throttle and it'll do so you know if the, if the plane's nose up it'll normally do like a, a, a 360 and a half or 540 so it'll do like a full spin and a half and then point down and come out of the Thing, and you can also try going into a, a different type of spin afterwards, things like that. So really, really enjoying the flex jet. Um, also did, of course, some harrying around, the rolling harries and stuff. It was a lot of fun. Um, did the... Sorry. Next up was, of course, the... Uh, I say, of course, you have no idea. Uh, the AXN. Um, flowing around, it's just a plane that, that sips power and, and floats around and it's lovely. It's one of these things where I'd love to put, you know, gyros and stuff in it, put an, F, uh, an F411 an in, but, again, the whole reason why this is so good is the fact that it's so um, lightweight, and I don't want to ruin that. But, what was very interesting is I was getting a little bored, to be brutally honest with you, so I did a flick roll um, with the AXM. I'd lost the elevator. I had no elevator control. Um, it sort of came out of this roll, was diving at the ground, a full throttle and up. It didn't feel right. We managed to climb out. And yeah, I had no elevator. Um, managed to bring it round on aileron and rudder. Um, luckily, that plane seems to, or, or however it was, however the elevator was, was broken. Um, if I gave it, it was sort of in a stall bob all the time. So it sort of, it would climb. And if you keep the motor off, it would then stall. Well, instead of dropping a wing or anything, it would just go nose down, gain speed. So I was able to fly it around, basically sort of like waves of a sea. Um, I tried to land it once, but I knew it was going to go too far and possibly hit a, like a tumble down dry stone wall. So I um, went around again and landed it. But once I picked it up after it landed, it was fine. The elevator worked fine, so God knows what I'm going to do about that. Um, it's possibly because of a bent in the control rod. I really don't know. The servo works fine. Maybe it was the bump on landing de-jostled it. But basically, I'm just going to not um, do daft things. It should be fine, I think, with that. Um, I then went to try and fly the mini AR wing. That needed a test fly because it was on the... Uh, 
and this would just be me over to the radio master. Um, but there was a helicopter going around, uh, so I made lunch, which was hot dogs. We managed to get the um, oven in the van working. One of um, so when the helicopter eventually went away and hot dogs had been devoured, um, I then tried to launch it. Um, but the sun was getting low at this point, and the sun was directly upwind. So I launched it, and it went straight into the sun. I couldn't fully see what it was doing. I basically just aborted it, and it cartwheeled in the field. Luckily, um, the canopy flew off, and I thought that was just all it was. But when I got there, where the canopy had come off, it actually sort of broken the foam around the lug. So that's just a little bit of glue, and that'll be ready to go again. Um, next, I tried the Dart 250. Um, so that model... Is a disappointment. I'll get into that in a minute. Um, but that has been reconfigured for two cell. It was two cell, then it was three cell, and now it's two cell again with iNav. And the problem was, um, I just couldn't get it to launch. Whether it be me manually doing it auto launch, I even went up to the top of a hill to launch it so it'd have plenty of space. It just goes down, 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 and hits the floor. And eventually, it broke. The camera came loose pretty much on the first attempt. I kept just slotting it back in just to test it. Um, but in the end, it, 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 it's broken the front off of it. I'll be honest with you, that plane, and I've discussed it before, um, the three, it's sort of like, if you imagine a triangle, oh, actually, uh, sorry, just bear me in Sorry about that. So as I was saying, if you imagine a triangle, and at each point you put these different things, so, you know, at one point, it would be um, a long flight time. Um, the other point would be um, a lightweight model, so it doesn't fly like a brick and flies nicely. Uh, and then the other point, the last point being um, the ability for uh, 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 it to have high power, so it'll climb easy, not be a, a pig to launch, things like that. The Dart 250 seems to be able to hit two of these three points, and that's it. Whereas the 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 drift is fine at doing it, the Dart 250 is a problem. The drift can hit all three of them points. Um, Power being its weakest, because it is only two cell, but you know it's close enough. The dot, the dot 250. If I go for a three S lithium ion, it's um, plenty of power and it'll fly for a long time, but it flies like a brick. If I go for a two S lithium ion, um, I can't launch the bloody thing because it's got no power. But the fl but the flight time and the fact that it won't fly like a brick is nice. Or and what I'm going to do the final t for the final sort of attempt with this um, before I scrap the bloody thing. Um, will be, um, I've got some multi-star LiPo batteries that are 1400 milliamp power 3S. And I'm going to give that a try. And if I don't like that, this, that model's probably going to go in the bin. Um, I'll take all the stuff out of it. Possibly considering something like the, um, Ranger T1. I've gone off of these small models, you know, the Mini AR wing, the Drift and all this other stuff. Because either they're not very good, or, 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 or they're good in very specific areas. And I know why people buy them, because it's of the 250 gram rules, but I'm not bothered about them. Uh, well, not bothered about them, you know what I mean? They don't affect me because of what I'm doing. So, something like a Ranger T1. Is it a Ranger T1? Let me fire up the old Banggood. I wouldn't buy it on Banggood, because they're bloody expensive nowadays. Um, AliExpress, probably. But I think it's the... He Wing T1 Ranger. It's 88 quid, which is a bit more expensive than I expected. And that's just for the kit. What? Plug and play. It was 128. Jesus. Um, let me... I wonder if, like, 3DXR or someone sells them. Anyway, while I'm looking for this... Um, yeah, so I, I'm not happy with the Dart 250. I think it's a little bit poo. Um, so I'll have to... Not her wing, he wing... Yeah, so there are other places where I can get it, but it's, it's a fairly expensive model for what it is. But that seems to have oomph. It's got the right type of wing to, to, to float and stuff. So we'll see. And also, I've got like over 50 models at this point. Getting rid of the dart, you know, it frees up a space. It's a small model, so it's not going to free up much space in the shed. But, um, you know, and then all them electronics can, can go back on the shelf. Um, so, yeah. I then actually flew the drift. Um... Uh, there's some weird issues with the drift so it needs something sorting out with the current sensor because it said I used 480 milliamps when I landed and the battery is at 44% 
I'm, I'm going to double check the battery when I charge it and see how many milliamps it puts in. Because if it puts in 480, or near enough, then we know it's right. But if it puts in the 1500 or so milliamps that it thinks it's used, then that's also right. I'm not sure if it's a crap battery or crap uh, current sensor calibration. I'm actually thinking more battery. Because these are cells that most people haven't recommended. The LG cells that people recommend are used in the 4S batteries that I barely use. Um, whereas the... Um, some, some, some of the others are, are worse. Um, you know, th there were batteries that I just went, oh, that's the best amperage and milliamperage, you know, amperage of the battery could, can handle to be taken out of it, and the milliamp hour storage. What was the best? And I bought that, but were, that was unprotected. And it may have backfired on me, because the cells that people don't seem to use, and also... They don't seem to have the milliamps that they say. Wildly, like less than a thousand milliamps. That means that battery has. So we'll see. As I say, that's a 3500 2S lithium ion that I've sold to myself. So we'll have to see on that. Um, other things that need sorting out. There's like flashing alarms on the screen. Like if I fly for more than 10 minutes or if I go above 100 meters, um, it flashes. Uh, where we are, 100 meters doesn't cover the hills around there. So there's not going to be a plane below that. Or if there is... Um, we will see and hear it. Um, so, um, yeah, that all them alarms need sorting out. It is still going down. I need to ask or figure out how to alter the trim so that if you go into most um, drift setup guides for iNav, they give you a, a, a um, sort of level to set it to. Uh, d -d 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 um, it also needs airspeed removing. I don't have an airspeed sensor, so it just shows a zero. We can get rid of that off the OSD. Um, but going down is getting to a point where it's actually dangerous. So I'm probably not going to fly that model until that is fixed. Next, I went back to flying some non-FPV planes. And I actually strapped, because nobody at the club was there at the time, um, the GoPro Hero 9 to my head. And it didn't go very well for the Yak. Um, I then flew the Yak. I'll go into specifics in a moment. Flew the Yak. Um, my, my flex innovations yak and they're making a hundred inch one again. Um, and it not only was the GoPro strap so tight that the GoPro was moving up and off my head, but also the um, it turned out that when I turned it on, it started recording, and then I'd press the button to make it record, and it actually turned off. So that's my fault. Um, the flex jet i flew after that i did get some footage but the gopro is pointing too far in the air again i need to alter the straps even more and make sure it's pointing like if anything slightly down i think um so we, we, we could try that for another time uh then i flew the rv8 where the camera either ran out of battery or something went wrong and it ended up um like killing the video and i've, I've tried to fix it because it's an mp4 you have to stop the recording, otherwise it doesn't, like, you know, uh, fix things properly. Um, or, or save the video properly. And it's just knackered. It's just knackered, I am afraid. So, uh, great news. Um, so, I, I was very low on batteries as well. I'm going to have to uh, look at keeping the batteries separate from everything so that they don't discharge themselves. Um... So, to the actual flights themselves, uh, my Kiki Yak, I have now found the C of G. It is batteries back to the end of the uh, strap loops, and I have now put a pencil mark. Flew great, really enjoyed it. Uh, I was almost annoyed that the um, video didn't come through. The flex jet, the balance was a bit off because of, I tried the Overlander batteries, which do way different. Um, I'd also get wanted to drop a wing a little bit. Um at random times again i think because of the weight issues uh, possibly actually being nose heavy more than tail heavy which is a bit weird but tail heavy for a, a thrust vector plane isn't as too bad um but yeah um i did get some video of that uh, again it was too pointed up in the air at the end of the video these where i said some flight footage i'll cut out what bit was half decent and and add it into the video whether I'll do it at the full 4K screen, it was on 4K, wasn't it? Because it did look a bit blurry at some points. Um, da, 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 yesterday, this one. K, 
get info. Will will it tell me what resolution it? No, it doesn't. It's not as useful as the. Oh no! Piss, piss off! Off you piss! Um, can I just say that get info on Mac is fucking useless compared to uh, the one on Windows? Anyway, um, so I do have a video of that. I'll try and put some stuff in at the end, whether it'll be f the full screen or whether I'll crop in a bit. If it's 4K, I can crop in. If it's 1080p, I can't really. But we'll see how that goes. Um, and then for the RV8 to finish with, and that was just the RV8 to its brilliance as per always. So that was one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine flights with oh well the Dart two fifty took out loads of little flights. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six different plates. Three FPV, three regular. Um, and that's it for the sort of talky bit of the flight log. Um, I will then get the one video that recorded properly. And get that into DaVinci Resolve and we'll see what bits of usefulness we can clip out of it. Um, it was all sort of in the bottom half of the screen because of the thing about Bob issues we were having. So we'll, we'll have to see how it goes. But uh, anyway, I thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, click the like button, subscribe and stuff like that. And I will leave you with some flight footage of the lovely uh, thing in my Bob that I forgot the name of. See you shortly. Bye bye. So there's a bit of an update on them batteries. Both of them were around 50%. Uh, and you can see it's put in roughly what I would expect, you know, 581 and 709, um, compared to what the um, compared to what the drift said, you know, 480, 580. You know, it's, it's only 100 milliamp hours out. It's quite close. Um, I think if anything, this is the probably the dark one because the dark spent more time at full throttle. Oh, shut them up now. Um, but you can see there's 581, I think that means the plane is set up right. It's just unfortunately, my batteries are crap, which is fun. But uh, yeah, I'm going to turn everything off and we shall build on. Uh, I'll this into the video, why not? And uh, then now you can see some um, flying clips. I am also trying some stabilization in DaVinci Resolve, so some of the clips look a little weird. That's why it's more of a test run than anything, but um, you should still enjoy.
one last spin and we'll leave it there, I think. 